Well then, Gruden's career is over, isn't it? Let me say this. John Gruden's career is over. It's over. While this most recent incident is certainly the worst of it, this is by no means the only thing Gruden's done wrong. John Gruden started this game in an Oakland Raiders hat, and now he's changed to Las Vegas Raiders hat. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. John Gruden went from Super Bowl winning head coach to beloved ESPN Monday Night Football analyst to a $100 million man in Sin City to this. By now, you've probably heard that Gruden's currently embroiled in a well-documented email scandal, which ultimately led to his sudden downfall and resignation as Raiders head coach. Thing is, the email scandal isn't the only embarrassing, disgraceful, or humiliating moment of Gruden's career. From clashes with his own players, to strange personnel decisions, to in-game disasters, to off-the-field incidents, here are the worst moments of John Gruden's career. The Email Scandal This is obviously the most disgraceful John Gruden moment of them all. It's not even up for debate. During the 2021 season, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times revealed disturbing details regarding emails Gruden had sent between 2011 and 2018. Among them, Gruden used a racist trope to describe NFLPA Executive Director DeMaury Smith, along with homophobic slurs against Commissioner Roger Goodell and the Rams for their decision to draft Michael Sam, an openly gay player in 2014. Gruden made several other inexcusable comments that were racist, homophobic, and misogynistic. He called for players who knelt for the anthem, specifically Eric Reed, to be fired. He was also critical of the NFL's movement in hiring female referees. Gruden could apologize a million times, but his legacy is tarnished and he's more than done in the NFL. He was removed from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Ring of Honor one day after he announced his resignation. With all this coming to light, there was simply no place for Gruden in the NFL anymore. And certainly not with Mark Davis's franchise, which has emphasized diversity and equality for decades. COVID-19 Violations and Fines The NFL's COVID-19 protocols for the 2020 season included a mandate where head coaches were to wear masks or face coverings on the sidelines. It's a pretty simple rule that was obviously put in place for the safety of everyone involved in the game. But both Gruden and Sean Payton missed the memo on this during the Raiders' New Orleans Saints Week 2 2020 Monday Night Football game. The two head coaches were each fined $100,000 for failing to properly wear the face masks. On top of that, both football teams were fined $250,000. It's also worth noting that Gruden contracted COVID-19 during the summer of 2020, and that still wasn't enough for him to follow the safety rules. As if that weren't ridiculous enough, the Raiders were fined yet again for violating the league's COVID protocols. In November of the 2020 season, the league fined Gruden $150,000 while the Raiders had to pay $500,000 and were docked a 2021 six-round draft pick for repeated COVID-19 violations. This included Raiders players attending a giant indoor gathering, allowing a non-credentialed person in the locker room, and Gruden, once again, failing to wear a mask. DUI Arrest A coach needs to be a role model both on and off the field. But Gruden was anything but a role model when he was arrested in October of 1998 for drunk driving in Pleasanton, California. And this was during his first season as the head coach of the Raiders. Not the best first impression by any means. Gruden was originally charged with a DUI, but the charges were subsequently dropped and Gruden was just fined $750. The Khalil Mack trade. Mack was everything the Raiders dreamed of when they took him fourth overall in the star-studded 2014 draft. In four seasons there, he earned a trio of Pro Bowl nods, two first-team All-Pro selections, and was named the 2016 Defensive Rookie of the Year after leading the Raiders to their first playoff berth in 14 years. Mack rightfully wanted to get paid as he entered the fifth and final season of his rookie deal. But this did not sit well with Gruden, who was just hired as the Raiders head coach on a 10-year, $100 million deal. Mack engaged in an off-season holdout. Gruden refused to pay him, however, and wound up trading the star pass rusher to the Chicago Bears before the start of the 2018 regular season. Chicago acquired Mack, a 2020 second rounder, and a conditional 2020 late rounder from Oakland in exchange for 2019 and 2020 first, a 2019 sixth, and a 2020 third rounder. 
Chicago then signed Mack to a six-year, $141 million extension. All he did was continue to dominate, leading the longtime struggling Bears to an NFC North title in 2018, plus a wildcard berth in 2020. We weren't very good last year on defense with Khalil Mack, Gruden said just weeks before the Mack trade. Aha! The Raiders finished 32nd, 24th, and 30th in scoring defense over the next three years without Mack. In the 2019 offseason, Gruden finally admitted that he cried for three days after trading away Mac. Maybe it's just us here, but the smart call is to usually just pay a franchise star when you have him. And I think of all that money Gruden wasted on defensive players in free agency when he could have just paid Mac and moved on. Monday Night Collapse Against Colts Week 5 of the 2003 season featured a can't-miss Monday Night Football showdown between Gruden's Bucks and Peyton Manning's Indianapolis Colts. The Bucks, of course, were the defending Super Bowl champions. Manning was the eventual MVP winner that year. But even more noteworthy, this marked Tony Dungy's return to Tampa, this time as the Colts head coach. The Bucks' ferocious defense kept Manning and the Colts' explosive offense in check for 56 minutes, holding a 35-14 lead with just 3 minutes and 45 seconds to go. James Mungro's 3-yard rushing score with 3 minutes 37 seconds to go made it a 2-score game. The Colts recovered the ensuing onside kick attempt, and Manning found Marvin Harrison in the end zone with 2 minutes and 29 seconds remaining to make it a 7-point game. Tampa recovered the onside kick but couldn't melt the clock. They punted it away and left a minute 41 of clock for Manning. A Ricky Williams 1-yard rush tied the score with 35 seconds left, but the Tampa Bay collapse wasn't even close to over. After Martin Gramatica's game-winning 62-yard attempt at the end of regulation was blocked, Gruden's Bucks had another opportunity to end it when they started with the ball in overtime, but were forced to punt, giving Manning a chance to win it. Tampa got a huge break, though, when Colts kicker Mike Vanderjack missed a 40-yarder. However, Simeon Rice was issued an unsportsmanlike penalty for leaping on the field goal attempt. Vanderjack got another chance, and his 29-yarder bounced off the upright and went through to complete the comeback, sealing the deal on what is still by far the most embarrassing loss of Gruden's career. Reaching for Cleveland Farrell Thanks to the Khalil Mack and Amari Cooper trades, Gruden and the Raiders held a trio of first-round picks in the 2019 draft. Well, a large portion of Raiders Nation couldn't help but feel utterly disappointed when Gruden and GM Mike Mayock used the number 4 selection on Clemson defensive end Cleland Farrell. Though Farrell was widely viewed as a first-round talent, nobody saw him going that early. This was a classic case of missing out on a chance to trade down, accumulate more picks, and get the guy you want later on. Through his first two seasons, Farrell had only six and a half sacks to go along with eight passes defended and two forced fumbles. He was a healthy scratch for the Raiders' Week 1 2021 home game against the Baltimore Ravens. Hindsight is 2020, but if you're gonna reach for a player, he kinda needs to be really good. Gruden and Mayock passed on more established offensive stars like Jacksonville Jaguars defensive end Josh Allen, Tampa Bay Buccaneers linebacker Devin White, Buffalo Bills defensive tackle Ed Oliver, and Carolina Panthers defensive end Brian Burns. As for the Raiders' other two first-rounders that year, let's just say Josh Jacobs and Jonathan Abram aren't exactly lighting up the world at the moment either. But at least they were only the 24th and 27th overall picks, respectively, and not the 5th overall pick of the entire draft. Clearly, drafting was not one of Gruden's strengths during his second tenure with the Raiders. Keyshawn Johnson Drama Johnson was a three-time Pro Bowl wideout and an instrumental part of the Bucks Super Bowl 37 championship team, but his relationship with Gruden quickly ran sour and lasted less than two seasons. During a 2003 game, Johnson was seen angrily screaming at Gruden. Johnson grew frustrated over the team's usage of him, and the Buccaneers ultimately decided to suspend him for the final seven games of the season. Tampa traded Johnson to the Dallas Cowboys in the ensuing offseason, and needless to say, they never replaced his production at whiteout. After Gruden's resignation, Johnson wasted no time ripping his former coach. He just always been a fraud to me. He just always been a fraud to me. Tell us how you really feel, Kishan. Tuck rule game. The Tuck Rule controversy created two of the biggest what-ifs in NFL history. One, what if Gruden had stayed with the Raiders? How different
different would his legacy have been? And two, what if Tom Brady didn't win that iconic AFC Divisional Round tilt? Does he still go on to become the GOAT we know him as today? Everyone knows this by now, and yes, we know you Raiders and Patriots fans are sick of hearing about it. Tom Brady was seemingly strip-sacked with under two minutes remaining, securing a trip to the 2001 AFC Championship game for Gruden's guys. Or so we thought. The NFL officials conducted a review, and that's when the football world learned of the tuck rule. That most of us had no idea even existed. Because of that rule, Brady's fumble was overturned and deemed as an incomplete pass. The Patriots maintained possession, and Adam Vinatieri booted the game-tying field goal in a snowy blizzard. He wound up kicking the winner in overtime as well. And the Patriots, of course, went on to win their first of six Super Bowls in the Brady-Bill Belichick era. As for the Raiders, it would be Chucky's final game with the franchise. Until his return in 2018. Gruden and Al Davis disagreed on how to run the offense going forward, and the former was traded to the Buccaneers. As everyone remembers, Gruden's Bucks then went on to crush the Raiders in Super Bowl 37 the following year. So, we're sure Gruden had no regrets about how everything played out. But at the same time, who knows if his career could have been even better if the Tuck Rule incident never occurred? What if Gruden led the Raiders to a Super Bowl title that year, and another championship the following year? What if he stays and the Raiders don't enter a two-decade period of irrelevance? So many questions that we'll never get the answer to. The Antonio Brown Saga Man, where do we even start? The mercurial and troubled Brown had a falling out with Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers coaches in the 2018 season. The All-Pro wideout demanded a trade, and Pittsburgh had no choice but to give in. Taking advantage of the Steelers dealing from a position of weakness, Gruden and Mayock acquired AB for the low price of a third and fifth round pick. But Brown's tenure in Oakland was nothing short of an incident-filled disaster. He had to miss practices after suffering frostbite in a cryotherapy session because he didn't wear the proper footwear. Brown also threatened to retire because the NFL banned his desired helmet model. He angrily confronted Mayock for fining him over missed practices, and Raider players reportedly had to hold Brown back from attacking the GM. Brown subsequently published a recorded video call between him and Gruden on YouTube. Let me ask you this, Steve. Do you want to be a Raider? I've been trying to be a Raider since day one. By the way, state law requires the consent of both parties for a phone call to be leaked to the public. Gruden played it off, said he loved it, and reportedly gave Brown permission to publish it. But the situation continued to cause a distraction, and AB was eventually released by the Raiders on September 7th, before ever playing a regular season snap for them. This trade and the non-stop drama involving Brown left a lot of egg on the face of Gruden. Somehow, the Steelers wound up winning this trade after all. But what are some other embarrassing John Gruden moments that should have been included on our list? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around at TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.